How's it going folks and welcome back to episode number 34 of Park to Prem. Today it is the FA Cup second round and we are taking on Peterborough United, a team who sit top of League One. We've been here before. We took on the team top of League One last year in the FA Cup. We beat them back then. That time it was Huddersfield who have since now been promoted. We're going to hope the history repeats itself today. Let's get straight into this. We are back on Tuesday, the 5th of December. This game was meant to happen a few days ago, but as has become tradition at this point, uh, the game got postponed. I feel like our pitch floods a lot. I don't want to, you know, throw Broadhurst Park under the bus, but we definitely have issues when it comes to rain and just games being postponed. And frankly, it's just quite annoying. It is also worth acknowledging that the stadium capacity has been increased. Back at the start of last month, we had all those new seats put in and we now have 5,900 seats. So hopefully you'd like to think attendances have been on the up. And well, the answer to that question is, yeah, they have been on the up. We're immediately selling out at 5,900 seats. So I feel like another expansion is in the works. That said, not sure where the money is going to come from to do that because right now there's quite a lot of debt. What I will reiterate is I am spending way, way, way within the wage budget. I am being a good boy. I am spending money that is being given to me. I do feel like a cup run might be a necessity in order to solve the financial issues. Of course, we are in the FA Cup over in the league. Well, we are seven points behind Mansfield Town who are top. Of course, we will be taking them on in the second game of today's episode, assuming that we don't draw against Peterborough and go to a replay. Now, since you were last here, three games played in the league, one in the EFL Trophy. Over in the league, it's been not exactly plain sailing. We beat Rochdale 1-0, a good performance. We then lost 3-2 to Port Vale. Yeah. Hmm. Um, look, we weren't good enough here, to be honest. They had a sending off, then we had a sending off. Dylan Crow, two red cards now this season. People wonder why I don't like Dylan Crow. It's because he's a liability. Yeah, he got sent off in this game. I don't want to say he cost us the result, but he definitely hindered our ability to chase the game. And it was it was a little bit like Alexis Sanchez, actually, for Inter this week in the Champions League, or rather last week in the Champions League, where we scored a goal. You think the comeback could be on? We're only one goal behind. And then a minute later, Dylan just does Dylan things, really. Off the back of that game, though, we bounced back well with a 3-0 win against Cambridge United. Duffy, Gold and Maitland with the goals. And well, Maitland picked up more goals in the next game. Yes, a hat-trick against League One Rotherham, albeit as they played a rotated team in the EFL Trophy. Good little performance. Maitland, my little mate, he's still doing pretty well for us this year. Three goals, two assists, a 7.46 rating. And he has been a pretty formidable goal scorer in the Cups. Four, or rather five, in four in the EFL Trophy. One in one in the EFL Cup. We will hope he can keep his goal scoring escapades going today. But anyway, let's get into this. In terms of team news going into the Peterborough game, Thomas Sang still out injured for a little while yet, actually. Two to five weeks for him. Of course, he got injured last episode. Elsewhere, Butterworth is suspended. So a bit of a shuffle in the midfield. Martinez is going to come in and play that centre mid on attack role for us. The Venezuelan has been exceptional this year. Really, really been impressed by him. Not necessarily justifying his wages entirely, but at the same time, I don't feel like we've been massively mugged off by him. With him moving across, that means that Ibrahim is going to come in and play as the Mazala. This is the role that Martinez, as of late, has been playing. Uh, Ibrahim gets the spot in the team by virtue of the fact he's had a pretty solid season so far in a handful of appearances, and I want to give him more of a chance today. Elsewhere in the team, Duffy comes in for Riches. Riches' recent form hasn't been amazing, so a little bit of change needed there. We are going to go with Gold and Nesbitt up front, and at right back, Sang's out injured, and look, after the Dylan Crow sending off, I don't, I just don't trust him, basically. So Sam Bird is coming in, and Sam Bird, he's now a competent centre-back. Give it, I don't know, another episode or two, it'll be accomplished, and I might even start considering kind of playing him there. But for now, at least, he's slotting in at right back. He is going to have a lot of defensive work you'd imagine to do today. In terms of Peterborough's team, the man to be fearful of is Nathan Mitchell. This guy is, well, very, very good. Um, I say that. He's, I've just I've just realized he's suspended. So their key player is not available today. Maybe, I, maybe I'm less scared now. I was looking at this guy earlier thinking, how are we going to contain him? Turns out he's contained himself. 
I suppose the other player we've got to be wary of is the standout goal scorer uh, for Peterborough. That is Mika Biereff. He is an English striker. He's good in the air. He's quick. I mean, I'm now curious. How does he compare with Nesbitt for us? I mean, he's... You know what? He's not as quick. He's not as good in the air. He's probably a slightly better footballer, though. But there's not a massive world of difference. I feel like I'm trying to convince myself here. And I'm, I'm the more I look at it, the less convinced I am of my point. Okay, Mika is better. He, I'll, I'll admit it, he is a better player. So this is not the easiest game that we could have had in the FA Cup. I feel like um, I would have liked to have got a lower league opposition. It's worth noting that the winner of this game is going to take on Port Vale in the next round. Port Vale, a team in our division. You might remember, though, that we did just lose to them 3-2 in that game where Dylan Crow got sent off. So they're not a free win by any means. And of course, in order to even get there, we've got to win this match. We could be called into some early defensive action because Morin's at the edge of the box. An effort from range goes just over the bar. Peterborough starting this game sharp. Not exactly been a classic this game so far. We are edging out possession. We've had slightly more shots on target, although a real lack of quality from both teams going forward. But maybe a chance here as Nesbitt has an effort, but he's offside, wouldn't have counted anyway. Cole Will surging down this right-hand side. Of course, Peterborough playing a 4-2-3-1. They're going to look to, you'd imagine, use the wide areas where we can get caught out. And while speaking of the wide areas, Burroughs is there. And Sam Bird, he was bird watching. He was just having a daydream. Burroughs sneaks in behind, makes it 1-0 to Peterborough in a game that's not had a great deal of chances. Kind of disappointing to surrender one there quite so simply. Bird just caught a little bit in no man's land, caught a little flat-footed, and in the end... A nice finish, actually, by the Peterborough striker into the near post gives them the lead. I don't want to panic too much just yet. Plenty of football still to be played here. And uh, we've not looked completely out of our depth just yet. An immediate response here would, would be good. If we concede a second before half time, we might have to, you know, construct some more radical plans, I suppose, for how we're going to address things going into the second half. But at least right now, look, we're in possession. We're knocking the ball around confidently. And Riga Booty, he's on the overlap. He plays it inside to Duffy, who gives it out to Stephen Gold. He's bringing it forward. He gets tackled. It was an insane tackle. I don't know if he even managed to even get a shot away there, but I thought for a second Stephen Gold was going to have a prime opportunity. It was dealt with, but we might still have a chance here. Ibrahim, Duffy hits it. Oh my word, Joe Duffy. A big call today to start him in this game over Riches. Oh my, he's just turned into... Sonic the Hedgehog. Did anyone else see that? That was that was weird. Um, let's not question it. I guess the steroids are working. Booty, though, working the space down the near side. Martinez lays it inside. Ibrahim to Duffy. Turns, hits it with the second touch. Into the top corner. Keeper no chance. That's the goal before half time we needed. At the break here, 1-1. Given the fact we're taking on League One opposition and one of the best teams in League One, I've got to be relatively happy with that, right? I'm going to tell the players I've got faith in them. We are going to need another here to avoid the replay. I assume that if this was a draw and it went to a replay, we'd play them at the weekend and the, uh, the game that we've got planned already against Mansfield would be rescheduled. But let's hope it doesn't come to that. Let's hope we can score in this second half as Ibrahim shields the ball away, receives it back. Bird dinks it. Martinez is there to gold. It's blocked away by the defender. The build-up play was so nice there. Martinez very nearly with an assist. And uh, Martinez is actually having a really, really good game at the moment as the centre mid on attack. Stitching together a lot of our play. Ibrahim on the other side has an assist for Duffy's goal. 25 minutes left here. Nesbitt has not covered himself in glory. Maitland got a hat-trick last time out. We're going to bring him in here. Elsewhere, Joe Duffy, despite having that goal, is only on a 7.0. And he's not really 100% match sharp. I'm going to bring in Richards here just to really inject some pace into the final third. Both Richards and Maitland, players where their acceleration is really one of their main strengths. And I feel like against a tiring Peterborough defence, it could be the play. This has been a very, very even game. Not a lot happening in this second half. Three minutes of added time. I don't really want to gamble much here. I'm quite happy to go to a replay in a bizarre way. And unfortunately, that is what we are going to have to settle for. It finishes 1-1 here. We didn't play well. But actually... The result was kind of fine. Nothing happened in the second half. Neither team looked great going forward. And on as an even at Broadhurst Park, we are going to go to, I want to say London Road. Is it London Road, Peterborough's ground? Also, Port Vale just beat Stevenage. They're now up to second. Worth noting, we have got three games in hand. And elsewhere, Mansfield just lost to Oxford. So that is a really, really big result for us. If we win all our games in hand, we go top. Um, I say that like that's a given. That is 
pretty difficult to do, albeit because, yeah, three games in hand. That is a bit annoying, isn't it? Anyone else getting annoyed by that? Why can't we just play the same number of games as everyone else? So a game against Port Vale, who are in second, has just been rescheduled. That means the replay is after the Mansfield Town game. Okay, should we do a triple header? We'll do a triple header. I'm probably going to edit the Mansfield game down quite a lot, so it's not a super long episode. But you know what? We've not done it in a while. Spontaneous triple header. No messing around. Mansfield, four days away. Let's go get them. So some really good news. In that game against Peterborough, we set a record for gate receipts. Of course, the expanded capacity, all the new seats put into the ground. And yeah, £140,000 made. Not exactly solving all of our money wo woes, but they, at least it looks slightly better. I guess, you know, seeing 600000 as opposed to 700,000 is nice. And, uh, well, we're going to get straight into this next game. As I mentioned, we're taking on Mansfield. They're top of the league. A defeat here, and we can't go above them if we win our games in hand. A win here, we do our title hopes a real world of good. Uh, in terms of the team for today's game, Butterworth's going to come back in. Rich is also coming back in. I am also going to start Maitland over Nesbitt for this match. Uh, the defence is going to remain the same. Little bit of news. Thomas Sang has signed a new contract with the club. Talked about this as a kind of ongoing issue a couple of episodes ago. He has lowered his wage demand sufficiently. And whilst it is a small wage rise for him, when he's fit, he's a very good right back for us. And with his potential resale value, because he has got quite good reputation, which kind of bumps up his market price. Um, I didn't want to lose him on a free of course, the new contract opens up the opportunity to potentially sell him on, if we so wish, uh, in the next six months or so. So this is a tricky game away from home. You could definitely argue this is the most difficult game of the season. So let's see what we can do here as, well. Oh my word, Butterworth back in the team today after serving his suspension. An effort from range not far wide of the post. Halfway through this first half, just looking at the stats, we're not having as much of the ball, but we've definitely limited Mansfield's ability to do anything with the possession that they have. And on the break... We've looked deadly, albeit without creating great opportunities. But, uh, well, we, we need to do potentially some defending here because Mansfield are going to bring it forward right. Hits it from range. Oh, my word, they've hit the crossbar. That was a crazy effort. Um, I, I'm going to claim McDonald had it covered. I'm not entirely sure he did. And, well, from one end to the other because it's now Riches to Martinez. Whips it in. Stephen Gold, back post header. Been a while since we've seen one of those in a live commentary. But Stevie Boy... Gets an all-important goal here. Of course, a player who's now been at the club, I think, four or five seasons. He's seen it all. He's been there. He's got the postcard. And, uh, well, he's just stuck a stamp on that postcard as he's headed it goalwards and delivered it into the bottom corner. We make it 1-0. Perfect, perfect first half thus far. Ten minutes to the break. I'd quite like to keep this lead. I say, as a highlight begins. It's going to start with a goal kick, but we're building out from the back. Some nice build-up play as Regan Booty brings it forward and lays it inside to Taylor, who, well, to start the year, has been really standout Terry Taylor, although as of late, he has dropped off just a little bit. Oh, my word, Rich is an opportunity there. He blazes it wide. We seem to have a real inability to hit the target as of late, I've noticed. 25 seconds left of the half. If either team is going to be able to create that one last opportunity, it's going to require some pretty rapid build-up play. Bird makes his way down the line and plays it forward to Maitland. Mansfield playing a high line. Maitland has that pace to get in behind. His pass wasn't great, but Bird's done well to win it back. And it could be with Bird again to get to the byline. He floats it back post. Butterworth gets his header on it. He hits the crossbar. Mansfield get it away from danger. And with that, the half-time whistle blows. They are perhaps a little fortunate to go in only a goal down. At half-time, words of encouragement. We don't need to overcomplicate things here. You're doing great. More of the same. We probably win this game. As this game's progressed, Mansfield are creating more and more. And inside the first kind of 15 minutes of this half, I've not really liked what I've seen. So we're going to play out from defence. We're going to try and work the ball into the box. Just slow down the ball a little more. Look to pass it a little shorter. Look to just keep the ball. Especially as the away team, if you can just take the sting out of the home team's attack by bossing possession. It's, uh, well, it's always a good way of managing a match. And I do feel like we have the technical ability as a squad to play a passing game. So that's what we're going to look to do here. McDonald and Quanta and Co, the defence, just having their own little game around the back. They're having a grand old time. As long as we don't turn over possession inside our own half, I'm quite content to see us knock the ball around like that. Mansfield, as a result, forced to go long. Quanta doesn't get there. And, oh my word... Aloe Faye just tucks it into the bottom corner. 
that was very simple. I'm talking about this beautiful passing game that we're going to play. Mansfield showing us what the lower leagues of England are all about. Fisher has it, shouts Avit, kicks it the entire length of the pitch. Quanta gets some rain in his eye. Striker takes it down, turns, slots it away and makes it 1-1. Bird on a booking scares me, but the only man I can really bring on is Dylan Crow, so I'm going to do it. Elsewhere, Maitland has been shocking today. Nesbitt, come on, Duffy on for Richards, who definitely hasn't covered himself in glory. A uh, few players not really performing great today, but this game's not out of reach. There's still time, and we could have a chance here. We do have a chance here. It's scrappy as hell. Duffy's just come on off the bench and got the instant impact. He scored a goal last game. He might feel hard done by to be dropped for this game here. I did drop him with one eye on the FA Cup replay in a few days' time. His initial effort was blocked by the defender, but it fell straight back to him. Kicks it into the open goal. We restore our lead in this game. And possession, whilst it's not really entirely in our favour, we have started to have a little bit more of it since we changed things up. That said, Maris with a free kick hits it. That wasn't far over. I'm fine. Um, yeah, Mansfield coming forward here. This would be a huge win away from home if we can hold on to it. I am going to switch time wasting on to some times. And we are going to just slow the pace down now. Let's manage this game. Five minutes left. You know they're going to throw men forward. You know they're going to try it. We've got two minutes to hold on here. And then a highlight begins. Don't do it to me, football manager. Don't hurt me like this. Terry Taylor, forward to gold. Options inside for him. Of course, they're committing men forward here. There could be a really good opportunity. Duffy to Nesbitt. Point blank range. The subs linking up. But Nesbitt smashes it straight at the keeper who saves it. A chance to put the game beyond doubt. And whilst with 40 seconds left, I'd like to sit here confidently saying, this is fine, we're still going to win the game. You still want to see those chances scored, don't you really? That was wasted. That was disappointing, as I mentioned. I think that is going to be all she wrote for the game. I mean, if they go up the other end and score now, I'm just going to, you know what, we won't do the, the other um, game against Peterborough today. I will go and have a lay down and a cry instead. But... No, I think our job here is done. Dylan Crow, take it into the corner, mate. Time waste all you want or cross it into Nesbitt for him to fluff another chance. Look, 2-1. We'll take that. A really, really big win against the team top of the table, a team who really do not slip up very often. How did Port Vale get on? That's now the new question. If Port Vale slipped up as well, we're in a really, really good kind of position to compete at the top of the table. And the answer to how did Port Vale get on is they lost 1-0 to Oxford. Of course, we beat Oxford a couple of episodes ago. We go back into second, four points behind Mansfield. Worth noting that Oxford and Northampton are not a million miles behind us. But of course, with three games in hand, we really should be backing ourselves to return to the summit of the league table And once those games come around. Duffy on off the bench to make an impact to secure us the win. Great performance by him. Peterborough. Three days away. We are going to rest all of the players. We're going to get straight forward to that game. Do not go anywhere. I want an FA Cup run like last year. Let's see if we can make it happen, shall we? Spontaneous third match time. We're taking on Peterborough away. Of course, this is an FA Cup replay. I already alluded to it, but if we make it through this, we don't really get a sexy game. We're going to play our team in our own division, but it would be an opportunity at the very least to continue to make it further. Maybe even match last year's run where we made it to the fourth round. But first, we have the small matter of Peterborough away. Of course, we have just played a game. I've rested up the players. Unfortunately, in midweek, Nesbitt picked up an injury. And to be honest, I can't really play him. So as a result, we're going to have to bring it in and guess. And I do feel like the striking position is one area of the pitch where when we have an injury or two, perhaps we do slightly lack a body in the final third. That said, I don't know. Between Gold, Maitland and also Nesbitt when he's fit... I feel like we've got good attacking options. And then, of course, Duffy and Riches kind of share the duty as the centre attack in mid for us. After the last couple of games, I am going to go with Duffy for this game. The 24-year-old has been in some pretty good form. Elsewhere, Butterworth and Martinez are going to play either side of Eccles. And the back four remains the same. Yes, I'm sorry, Dylan Crow fan club. I'd rather go with Sam Bird over your guy. Um, send angry letters in the mail if you, if you want to, to complain. I probably won't read them, though. No messing around. Let's get into this. I'm hoping that we can have a good start in this game. I feel like against Peterborough in the first leg, they're a little slow to get going. And while the fact they've got a corner here scares me slightly, it's a low corner to the near post, which is played back out wide. 
We may still have some defending to do though here because Burrows has time and space. The goal scorer of the first leg floats it to the back post. McDonald makes a great saving goal for us there to get it away from danger. I feel like McDonald, whenever the cameras haven't been on him during episodes that aren't live comes, he's really impressed me in goal. And then whenever I come back, he doesn't do great. So we're going to hope today he can do great. He started this game off well with that stop there. I have a sneaking suspicion more is going to be asked of him. Anyway, it's Sam Bird on the overlap of Martinez. Can the right back get the ball in? Not yet, he can't. He plays it short to Martinez, who gives away the ball. That is going to stay in play. Bird is on a booking after 12 minutes. That has to scare me. And Biref, who we discussed before the first game, finds his way through, uses his pace to get in behind Quanza, and gives Peterborough the lead inside the first 15 minutes. That all came from Martinez's inability to get the ball in early. Colwell snuck in behind Bird, played it for defensively, were all out of shape. McDonald came out for it, but left in the one-on-one. -on -one. It was always going to be a tall order. And in the end, it was a pretty good finish at the end of it to give Peterborough uh, the opening goal in this game. You know what? Start, get shouty, shouty. That's what I need to do. Just make the shout button go grey. Shout demand more. 90% of the time, it works all of the time. Butterworth, Duffy hits it. Joe Duffy, you are beautiful, mate. Three goals in all three games today. He's added one there. Not sure if it was quite as good as his one in the first leg. But there it is. Definitive proof that demand more still works. Eccles with the ball, Butterworth to Duffy, afforded time and space in the box. Do that at your peril. Finds the top bins, makes it 1-1. Another highlight starting on the far side. We've already scored one from here. Could Butterworth score from range? He goes for it, and I'll, I'll tell you what, he's actually done it. Two goals for us in the space of a matter of minutes. We've not had many shots this game, but the long shots that we're having are going in. And on this occasion, it's Duffy turning provider for Butterworth. Edge of the box, slightly further out than Duffy, picks his corner, wraps his foot around it. And for the first time across the two legs against Peterborough, we have the lead completely against the run of play, in all honesty. At the break, two goals up. We've had the odd chance here and there, but the crucial thing is we've managed to find the back of the net. And today, it's been the story of the midfielders. Maitland and Gold definitely need to step up in this second half. They've not been at their best. And in fact, there's a, there's a temptation to change things early. I am going to take off Bird, I think, and bring in Dylan Crow just because of that booking. It scares me. Elsewhere, we've got Riches as really the only option that I could bring on as a striker. Um, to be honest, he can play as a pretty bloody good advance forward. So with Maitland not firing on all cylinders, I'm going to make the potentially controversial decision to make a double change early here and get Riches in in the advance forward position. So Rich is now on for us in that advanced forward position. Now some defensive action for us to potentially deal with. It's on the far side. It's crossed in and Biref. Well, we talked about the fact he's quick and he's good in the air. Very nearly scored a header, but just wide of the post. 20 minutes left in this game. You have to expect Peterborough to try and throw the kitchen sink at us. So with that, let's not pass it into space. Let's look to play the ball out from the back. Slow the pace down. No nonsense here. We have a game to manage. We definitely have grown into this game, by the way. We were slow in the first half. Second half, we've come out stronger. Having got the lead, I think it's allowed us to settle into the game. But of course, plenty of football still to be played here. As Riches finds himself in behind Devine. Could he score on off the bench? He probably should have scored on off the bench. He's missed the one-on-one. -on -one. We could come back to regret that. Because it was an opportunity wasted. I'm going to switch to positive as well for the last three minutes here. They've switched to a 4-4-2, a last roll of the dice for Peterborough, but nothing is being created in terms of highlight chances, he says, until now, as the ball is lumped forward to gold. I mean, a chance to put this game beyond doubt. He runs wide. He passes it back to Duffy. It hits the woodwork. It hits the keeper on the back. It goes out. It doesn't matter. FC United are going to go marching on in this FA Cup run. With a huge, huge win away from home against the team top of League One, we rode our luck. We got fortunate with the long shots. Let's make no mistake. We were very fortunate to go in at the break 2-1 down. But from there, or 2-1 up rather, but from there, we've done well. We've done the business. We've managed to get a massive, massive win. And as I already mentioned, we already know who we're playing. We're playing Port Vale in a month's time. And with that, more matches are being rearranged. We are going to end up with more matches in hand. I don't like that.
All in all though, crazy run of games today. That is the kind of performances I wanted to see. Some tricky games, but two away wins to wrap things up. I mean that going into the month ahead, we have to feel a little bit confident. We are going to come back in January. The transfer window will be swinging on open as we travel away to Port Vale, a team who are currently a thorn in our side in the league, potentially going to be a thorn in our side in the FA Cup, where we're into the third round. And I would like to go a little further than last year now that we're here. Another really, really great episode today. Those performances kind of give me confidence that we can indeed get promoted today. And perhaps we are ready to make that step up. The media, they back us. I back us. We just have to do our talking on the pitch. Hopefully when I return next time, we'll still be towards the top of the table. Oh, I am already excited for tomorrow's episode. I hope to catch you guys here for it. Same time and place as always. Until then, take care. It's me, Jack. And I'll see you on the next one. I'm out.